Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today I'm just going to be having a quick look at vector displacement maps, uh, which I'm going to be creating in ZBrush and sending over to RenderMan 22. So um, I've got a high poly mesh here, it's um, 4.3 million points, and we're going to create a displacement map from this, and we're going to send it over and render it up on a lower poly model. So the first thing that we want to do in ZBrush um, is we're just going to duplicate this and then we're going to rename it, call it disp. You don't have to call it that, you can call it whatever you want. And then I'm just going to um, Z remesh that down to something that Maya can handle because you don't really want to be going into Maya with a you know, 5 million poly uh, model, otherwise it's just going to straight up crash all the time. So I'm going to set the target poly count to say 20,000 polys and I'm going to leave adaptive on. Um, now, doing a quick Z remesh is not going to give you the 100% best result on your displacement map. Um, generally, areas where you have more detail, like for instance this tongue part here or the skin here, um, you want to have more detail in your topology. So it would be better to go through and Z remesh it with like the Z remesh tool or something like that, but or the retopo tool or, or something like that, or retopologize it in a different program or whichever way you like uh, but for the sake of time I'm just going to do it this way and this will work okay so I'm just going to Z remesh that down and now we've got our low poly mesh so um, if you're working from a low poly base you wouldn't have to Z remesh it um, the reason we're doing this is so we can create a UV map essentially so now that we've done that we'll go back to our sub tools we've got the displacement we've got the base the base is the high poly and the displace um, layer is the low poly so what we're going to do is project some detail onto it and then we're going to control D to subdivide project all again subdivide again project all and you see we're getting a little bit closer I'm at half a million polys the um, final version was uh, 4.5 million so I'm going to subdivide again which is going to take us to 2 project again all right, and you'll see at uh, 2.5 million polys, we've pretty much got all the detail there. Um, it's not quite as tight as what the most high poly uh, subtool is, but for the sake of this one, uh, we're just gonna roll with that. All right, so now we need to create a UV map. Um, if you don't have Z plugin on your right-hand column, you can just go to Z plugin um, and drag it down there if you like, or do it from the drop-down. And I'm just gonna go to UV master and you can have symmetry on if your model is symmetrical mine is not so i'm just going to unwrap it this way so uh actually first just going to shift d down to our lowest poly version and then unwrap that's the other reason you don't want to have a high poly model because you can't unwrap something that's you know four and a half million polys it just it won't happen so now that that's unwrapped we can um, change our settings so this will work this uh, the displacement map will work for render man so we're going to go to preferences um, we're going to go to import export and we're going to make sure that tangent flip and switch is set to 41 this is specific to render man for other um, renderers it will be a different setting for render man you want it set to 41 now we're going to go to tool and we're going to scroll down to vector displacement map we're going to enable all four of those buttons and then we're going to create and export a vector displacement map, which will also export our model. So I've already done this as a test, but I'll do it the same. I'm just going to overwrite that. Um, and that's created a 32-bit um, vector displacement, which is what you want. You're going to get the most bit depth, the most detail out of your displacement map when you use a 32-bit. You don't really want to use a 16-bit or lower. It's not going to look as good. And we will also export the, export the mesh. It's good to export the mesh with the displacement map because if you're working off a mesh and you change something in the UVs or something like that, it's not going to be compatible with the displacement map that you've created. All right, so let's jump into Maya. All right, so the first, uh, the easiest way to import your model is just to grab it from uh, in, uh, Windows Explorer and drag it in, and then we'll have it there. To get this model compatible with render man displacements, the first thing we want to do is with our model selected, go over to the um, attribute editor under the shape um, tab. We're going to go down to render man. Um, we're going to go down to subdivision scheme or subdivision surface. And we're going to set it to Catmull Clark, and we're going to set it to New Style Internal Only. And then under Geometry, I'm going to leave this as it is for now, but 
Um, watertight dicing may fix some areas that you have on the uh, seams of your map. So if you're noting areas, noting areas on your model where it sort of looks like it's, uh, uh, it's sort of open and there's a dark area inside, you can set this to yes and that would generally fix those errors. Um, but I'll come back to that in a moment so I can show you the difference. So for now I'm just going to quickly um, add some floor and stuff into this. Alright, so I've just added a floor and then a light. Um, and I'm also going to add a Pixar surface shader to our model. So we're going to select them and click the Pixar surface shader button. And we're going to go up to the hyper shade editor. Um, it's Pixar surface 2. I'm just going to call that Pixar Ghoul so I don't lose them. And we can graph that network. All right, so we need to get our displacement map in here. So we're going to hit tab and we're going to type in uh, Pixar texture and we're going to pick our texture node. We're going to open and go to wherever you've exported your displacement map to and select it. And you'll see it's sort of difficult to see probably in this video, but you can see the different colors of the displacement map there. Import that. And then we're going to add a new node. Everything else here can be left as it is. Um, we're going to type in Pixar Dispel. Placement transform, it's that one there. And I'll just select that node, hit 3 to expand it. And then we're going to run the RGB out from that into the displacement vector. And in the displacement uh, transform node, we're going to change it to ZBrush vector and we're going to have it set to tangent. Next, we're going to have a uh, PXR displace node created. And we don't need this, that shading group because I've already got one. so. Um, we can just run the out color into our shading group for our Pixar surface. And we want to run the result XYZ into displacement vector. All right, so with all that sorted, we can um, actually, I'm just going to turn on denoise. We'll run an IPR. Um, all right, for some reason, <laughs> initially that did that, uh, but now it's working. I just want to quick re just re-rendered it, so I'm not sure why that was, but if you have the same problem, just re-render, and it should help. Um, I'm just going to increase that to be a bit brighter. All right, so as you can see, the um, displacement map is working, so um, if we rotate that around, you can see that the teeth are actually being displaced. Not perfect, as I said before, you want to sort of do some better topology than I have. Obviously, just using Z Remesher is a quick and dirty way to do it. And if you're not sort of paying too much attention, it's going to look okay, sort of, you know, at that distance or whatever. Um, now, with the inherent thing, like I said before, I'll see if I can find a spot where the seams on this one are a bit weird. Yeah, it seems not to be doing it this time. Last time I did it, the seams were pretty bad, but um, I'll show you where it is anyway. I'll just stop that render. So just in the attribute ed editor for the model under the shape node, we want to go to uh, geometry, water type, and hit yes. And with that enabled, um, it does require a little bit more computa uh, computation. However, it will fix um, seams. Uh, in the last render I did of this, I had a lot of problems with seams being open looking. Um, and it fixed it right up. So if you're seeing that in your renders, then um, yeah, try try doing that. So yeah, as you can see, um, running up with a nice little displacement map. We're getting all our detail around the teeth and the tongue and the eyes, etc. Um, and because I only went up to two million uh, when this was a four million uh, vertex model, obviously all the detail isn't quite there. It's a little bit funky around the edges of the sort of gums and whatnot around its teeth, but um, just for the sake of this tutorial, that's going to be fine. So yeah, um, that should be pretty much it for this one. I'll do a separate tutorial on scalar um, displacement maps. They're a little bit different, but they're pretty straightforward if you understand this one already. Um, thanks for watching and happy rendering.